Shalom, beloved. A word. <clears throat> the last time we spoke, we spoke about the grain offering, the wheat. The wheat. That wheat is the first fruit. That first fruit offering, which goes on to five. Yashavel is that first fruit, that grain offering. When we speak about the grain and the first fruits, it signifies a voluntary submission and offering unto Yah, thanking Him for all that we have, acknowledging Him that everything we have comes from Him. We're going to read in the book of Jeremiah, chapter 2, verse 3. Book of Jeremiah, chapter 2, verse 3. Israel was holiness unto the Lord, and the first fruits of his increase. All that devour him shall offend. Evil shall come upon them, saith the Lord. This prophecy is full. It is pregnant with the word of the Lord. It speaks of who Israel is, who Israel was, what shall happen to Israel's enemies, the judgments that shall come. Book of Jeremiah chapter 2 verse 3. Israel was holiness unto the Lord and the first fruits of his increase. All that devour him shall offend Evil shall come upon them, saith the Lord. We know after the 400 years that Yah shall indeed judge the nations. He shall. We also know that there are those, when we read in the book of Romans, there are those who are not of the house of Yasharel, that through faith shall be joined to the Lord. They shall be through faith. They are considered Gentiles, strangers, but they shall be joined through their faith to Yasharel. Again, previously I spoke about the replacement theology. There is no such thing. Israel doesn't join to the other nation. The, those Gentiles, when it speaks in the book of Romans about the time of the Gentiles, okay, it also speaks that when the end of this system that we're in shall come, I'm going to go into the book of Romans chapter 11, when the end of this system comes, that the time of the Gentiles, Okay, those that the Most High shall let in shall have come to an end. And what does that signify, beloved? What does that signify? Okay, it signifies the fact that when you think about it, there's going to come a time when the word, right now the word is going out to all the world. But there's going to come a time when it stops. It stops. Because the time of the Gentiles shall have come in. Everyone's chance to get on that ark. That ark being a, sim a symbol of Yeshua HaMashiach. That ark of salvation. When they've had time to accept, to believe, to follow, to submit. When the fullness of the Gentiles shall come in, it is the end of the age. But Yasharel does not follow the Gentiles. Yasharel follows the word of the Most High. The Gentiles having faith in that word, they follow. That is why when you read in the book of Romans, chapter 2, verse 10, 
but glory and honor and peace to every man that worketh good, to the Jew first and also to the Gentile. The Gentile following the word of Yah, following, not Yasharel following them, because we know if we were to follow them, it would lead us astray. The oracles of the Most High were given to Yasharel. Okay, what does that mean? The word, the truth, the spirit of the Most High was given to Yasharel. We also know that there are some who have crept in among us. They try to teach and preach a different doctrine. These so called Gentiles who come amidst Yasharel. Not only do they want you to believe that uh, Yah has made the twain one, their concept, the Gentiles' concept, would have many in Yasharel slip. And what do I mean? They join to Yasharel, and many of them are not of the Spirit. And what do I mean? We can see where they're trying to push this thing where the Hebrew marries the Gentile. No, beloved. No, no. You see a lot of commercials now, and I'm just going to make it plain, where blacks are marrying whites or blacks are with Asians in marriage. And that goes against the covenant of the Most High, which is in the book of Deuteronomy. You shall not marry those strangers from those strange nations. But knowing that their time is short, they are proliferating it with pictures, with commercials, trying to push it. We're all at peace now. No, that is why to the Hebrew first and then the Gentile. Yasharel never follows the ways of the Gentile because the Gentile is how Yasharel was led astray. But there are strangers who join to Yasharel. They do. When we look in the book of Romans, chapter 11, and we look at I'm going to start at Book of Romans, chapter 11, the 11th verse. I say then, have they stumbled that they should fall? God forbid, but rather through their fall, salvation is come unto the Gentiles for to provoke them to jealousy. Now, if the fall of them be the riches of the world and the diminishing of them, the riches of the Gentiles, how much more their fullness? For I speak to you Gentiles. He's talking to the Gentiles. And see, you have to understand something, beloved. When you speak in terms of the world, you can think riches solely as money. But no, it is a complete riches. The true riches being that they have come into the presence and won a place, guaranteed a place with the most high who was a respecter of no one, okay? But I'm now I'm in Romans, I'm in chapter 11, I'm going to the 14th verse. If by any means I may provoke emulation to emulation them which are my flesh, Paul is talking about the fact he is an Israelite. He's speaking to the Gentiles, but Paul himself is an Israelite of the tribe of Benjamin. But if by any means I may provoke to emulation them which are my flesh and might save some of them, for if the casting away of them be the reconciling of the world, what shall be the reconciling of them but life from the dead? For if the first fruits be holy, remember those first fruits? He took us unto himself. 
He made us a holy nation, a nation of priests. We were a peculiar people. We are a peculiar people. All right. For if the first fruit be holy, the whole lump is also holy. And if the root be holy, so are the branches. And if some of the branches be broken off, and thou being a wild olive tree, were grafted in. And you are among them, and with them partake of the root and fatness of the olive tree. Boast not. You have people now that those of, of, of the Gentiles who feel they are part, have a part of that promise, and they do. But some have crept in, some, with lascivious intents. And what do I mean? They crept in with intent to actually cause destruction to Yasharel, wolves in sheep's clothing. Boast not against the branches. I'm in the book of Romans chapter 11, verse 18. Boast not against the branches, but if thou boast, thou bearest not the root, but the root thee. Meaning, they are not controlling the root, but the root is sustaining them. Thou will say then the branches were broken off that I might be grafted in. Well, because of unbelief, they were broken off. And thou standest by faith. Be not high-minded, but fear. You do have Gentiles that come in, beloved, and are joined. However, those that get high-minded against Yasharel, has this judgment ended completely? No. You have those that say they practice the faith, but we know that is not completely true. Why? Because you have some people that say they are God-fearing, and yet, they are part of that group. Oh, it's okay if a black man marry a white woman or a black woman marry a white man or Asian. or the... No, not according to the word of Yah. And if they say they follow Yah, are you truly grafted in? Or do you come with evil intent? For those who come through faith, they are a part of that root. They are. They are grafted in. That's why Romans 2, chapter 10 says, But glory, honor, and peace to every man that worketh good, to the Hebrew first and also to the Gentile. Those of other nations, they are following the word of Yah. They know the word of Yah tells them, you are not supposed to procreate with Yasharel. Yasharel is supposed to procreate amongst themselves. So we know this system, this evil system that tries to say, well, we're just showing love. No, you're trying to show destruction. When you promote marriage between Yasharel and those Gentile nations. No, no, you're not promoting good. You're not. We're back in Romans 11. Chapter 21, for if God spared not the natural branches, take heed, lest he also spare not thee. There are some people when they come in, they want to start sharing their doctrine, the doctrines of men. It's okay. It's not okay, beloved. And the prince of the air, what is the air, the media, this, everything you hear. The prince of the air wants to see Yasharel destroyed. They know the judgment has come, beloved. And they will use the guise of love and attraction to bring about Yasharel's destruction. It doesn't matter how many commercials they make. Yasharel is not supposed to marry and procreate with those Gentile nations. No, beloved. As a matter of fact, when you go into the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 7, trying to get to it, because I have a lot of books open, and I realize I'm going to have to make more than one, because I want to talk about the marriage supper, 
but I'm going to have to make more than one. Okay. Book of Deuteronomy, chapter 7, starting at the second verse. And when the Lord thy God shall deliver them before thee, thou shalt smite them and utterly destroy them. Thou shalt make no covenant with them, nor show mercy. Covenant is also marriages are covenants. Marriages are covenants. We are going to talk about the covenant between Yasharel and Yahuwah. Book of Deuteronomy, chapter 7, verse 3. Neither thou shalt thou make marriages with them. Thy daughter shall not, thy daughter thou shalt not give unto his son, nor his daughter shall thou take unto thy son. For they will turn away thy son from following me, that they may serve other gods. So will the anger of the Lord be kindled against thee, you and destroy thee suddenly. Understand the evil of the enemy and the intent about why you are not supposed to marry those other nations, okay? We're in the book of Deuteronomy chapter 7, and I'm going to start at the third verse. Neither shalt thou make marriages with them. Thy daughter thou shalt not give unto his son, nor his daughter shalt thou take unto thy son, for they will turn away. thy son from following me, thy children. For they will turn away thy son from following me, that they may serve other gods. They bring in these doctrines of men, these doctrines of men, and you see it and you hear it. The prints of the air, the media, the commercials, the movies, they're proliferating now. Why now? Because they know it is the end of Yasharel's judgment. Their judgment is coming. And that enemy wants to take down as many Israelites as they can. What did Yah tell us? For they will turn away thy son from following me, that they may serve other gods, these other ideologies. So will the anger of the Lord be kindled against you and destroy thee suddenly. I wanted to talk about the marriage supper, beloved. But I wanted to bring this out because there are um, Gentiles that shall be brought in, but you do not marry them. You do not. Okay. Remember the doctrines of men. These are doctrines of men. Um, and why were they brought in? Why were the Gentiles brought in? We're in book of Romans chapter 11, verse 20. Well, because of unbelief, they were broken off. Who? Yasharel. And thou standest by faith. Who? The Gentile. Faith. Faith in the word of Yah. Following the word of Yahuwah. By faith. Be not high-minded, but fear. Fear. For if God spared not the natural branches, take heed lest he also spare not thee. Behold, therefore, the goodness and severity of God on them which fell severity, but toward thee goodness, if thou continue in his goodness, otherwise thou shalt be cut off. There is a lot of confusion going on about the Gentiles and Yasharel. Personally, I believe, particularly right now, that when there is a gathering, if the Gentiles get the word of the Most High and they come in, I would let them gather on their own. I would not want to be mixed in with them, only because right now I know that Prince of the Air, that Prince of Darkness, is trying in any means and method possible to destroy Yasharel. Even in the Gentiles portraying love for Yasharel, if they truly love Yasharel and first and foremost Yah, Yahuwah, 
they would follow his word and not try to make marriages. And you need to take care, beloved. You need to take care because some are wolves crept in amongst the sheep. Okay? I wanted to talk about it, so I'm going to lay the foundation for it, about those Gentile nations brought in. So I'm going to lay the foundation for it now to come back to it. We're still in the book of Romans, chapter 11. And they also, if they abide not still in unbelief, shall be grafted in. Who? Yasharel. If Yasharel does not abide in unbelief, they get this word. And they realize the word is true. They shall be grafted in. They shall be brought in. They're the natural branches. For Yah is able to graft them in again. For if thou were cut out of an olive tree, which is wild by nature, he's talking to the Gentiles, and were grafted in contrary to nature into a good olive tree, how much more shall these, which be the natural branches, be grafted into their own olive tree? I would not, brethren, that you should be ignorant of this mystery, lest you should be wise in your own conceit, that blindness in part, is happened to Yasharel until the fullness of the Gentiles become in. There was a blindness intentionally that occurred to Yasharel. Until the fullness of the Gentiles, there are Gentiles who truly believe Yah, they believe in Yahuwah, they follow the word of Yeshua as best they can, and their, their hearts are and intents are good, and they follow by faith. But remember, to the Hebrew first and then the Gentile. Why is it first? Because the oracles were first given to Yasharel. Many of the Gentiles tried to remove Yasharel even as a nation. And, and they throw in this replacement theology. They also, and this is those who are enemies to Yasharel, the enemy is so intent on destroying Yasharel that they will use love, they will use marriage, they will make a covenant through marriage, which is against what Yah told Israel to do, to destroy Yasharel. And they bring in the doctrines of men. No, it's okay. This is love. No, it is not love. It is not love, beloved. No, mm -mm. it can't be. If they love Yahuwah and follow his word, Yeshua HaMashiach, which is how they got grafted in, then they would follow his word and not try to make covenant marriages with Yashavel. Beloved, this is running over and it is detailed. So I'm going to go into this more with subsequent videos and words to come. One of the things that I want you to know is also judgment first begins with Yasharel. The Most High is judging his church. Who is that? The body. Who is that? That's Yasharel. Judgment begins with Yasharel. Okay? Judgment begins with Yasharel. I'm trying to find it, beloved. And if Yasharel scarcely be saved, what about the other nations? Follow the word. Of the Most High, it cleanses you. The word of the Lord cleanses you, beloved. It cleanses you and it prepares you, beloved. I'm going to end with the book of John, chapter 15, starting at the third verse. Now ye are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. Abide in me and I in you as the branch. Mm. Cannot bear fruit of itself except it abide in the vine. No more can ye except ye abide in me. This is Yeshua HaMashiach talking. 
I am the vine, ye are the branches. He that abideth in me and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me, ye can do nothing. Remember, they're talking about those branches in the book of Romans chapter 11. Okay. Now, in order for you to come before the Most High, you have to be clean. How does one get clean? Mm. Book of John chapter 15, starting at the third verse. Now ye are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. Abide in me, and I in you. Abide in what? In Yeshua HaMashiach. Who is Yeshua HaMashiach? Book of Revelations chapter 19 tells us he is the word of God, the word of the Most High. Now ye are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. Abide in me and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself. The branch. Ye are the branches, beloved. You are those natural branches. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself. And even those who are grafted in. You abide in the word, the true word, and all the things that the word tells us to do and not to do. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself except it abide in the vine, in the vine, no more can ye except ye abide in me. Me who? Yeshua HaMashiach, the word. I'm the vine, you are the branches. He that abideth in me and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. For without Yahshua, for without me, Jesus is talking, Yeshua HaMashiach, ye can do nothing. Without the word of the Most High, ye can do nothing. Abide, beloved. Abide. You become cleansed. You are being prepared to be a bride unto Christ, who is the head. And the body is the believers. Beloved. It is very detailed and yet very simplistic. I want to go into this more, but I'm just going to lay the foundations for it right now. I'm laying the foundation. Out of our ancestors, Yahweh, Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, I pray that thou bringest this word to pass and let all who hear that love, honor, and praise thee receive thy word according as thou hast given it. Let it go forth and do what thou purposed it to do. We give you praise, honor, and glory, Master. We follow thee, for there is none other but thy word, thy spirit, thy truth, that leads us into life and life everlasting. We thank you this day, and we ask that thou come and find us in this land of our captivity. Forgive us our sins and the sins of our ancestors. And let it come, beloved. Let it come, Father. In the name of Jesus, Yeshua HaMashiach, we ask, give thanks, and praise thee. Amen. Shalom, beloved.